Hello, my witchy friends. I recently went on a two-week trip to the United Kingdom, and I was eager upon my return to share with you some of the bits and bobs and souvenirs that I brought home with me. I spent the first week in Dorset and the second week in London and I was there on um, archival research because as you know Britain has a long and varied history. Um, so there's a lot of archives to delve into if you are an academic. So let's start with this very, very crinkly. Postcards and discards of various types. Um, paper, ephemera of the places that I visit. And I usually also get a local newspaper because it's just such a wonderful way of remembering your stay somewhere. I want to show you before we go through all the postcards. There's this wonderful section inside the doors that I go that I discovered that just really encapsulates everything that Dorset has to offer. And it's called the Echo Camera Club. And there's just all sorts of photographs that readers submit of birds, flora and fauna, squirrels, hares, bees. And I must say, when I was walking along the river from for the first time, what I really noticed was how many birds I heard. The air was so fresh and the mist Settling on the hills was just like the most romantic, beautiful thing I've ever experienced. So, Dorset has got it going on. Okay. So, let's go through this considerably large stack. First thing on the stack is this beautiful Dante Gabriel Rossetti painting, which I saw in person at the Victoria and Albert Museum in South Kensington, London. And it's called The Daydream, and it was my dream to see a pre Raphaelite painting in and I did, and it was everything I could have ever dreamed it to be. I still can't believe that I saw it. I stood in front of this painting for a long time. And when you see them in person, the details, it's just so much more rich and evocative. The coloring, the brush strokes, everything is so much different. V&A also has a lot of William Morris stuff. And so this is the Strawberry Thief, which is one of his most famous textile works. 
and I didn't get to see the strawberry thief, the tapestry, and the part of the textile rooms were closed at the time of my visit. But I did get to see a lot of William Morris's wallpapers. And this one is called Windrush Furnishing Fabric. Um, but I saw a very similar one in a wallpaper form as well, and it was just so beautiful to see on the wall. I wish that my whole house was paper because it's just so beautiful, so characteristically William Morris. The v &A also ordinarily has a Beatrix Potter exhibit, but they didn't have it at the time I was there. But I hear that it's incredible. But I did still get a Beatrix Potter postcard for my good friend. She loves Beatrix Potter. And this is Beatrix Potter with her pet rabbit, Benjamin Bouncer. What a proper name. In that theme, I also got my friend Nora a hieroglyphic version of the tale of Peter Rabbit. And this is from the British Museum. I just it was so bizarre, so peculiar. Um, they made their own like translation of Peter Rabbit into hieroglyphics. And there's a whole translator's note. And it just gets more and more interesting the longer that you look at it. They justify parts of their translation. There's footnotes. And it just looks... So interesting, so different, just such an unusual idea, but so amazing, so incredible. Um, so I got this for my friend, Nora, because I know she loves Peter Rabbit and Beatrix Potter. And I'll be doing a lengthy book haul video at some point. British Library. I also got this postcard of Jane Eyre, and um, it's part of a manuscript for the story, and Jane Eyre is one of my all-time favorite works of literature. really want to go to Hayworth, which is in Yorkshire, and see the Bronte Parsonage where they all lived next time, for sure. This is the inside of the British Library. This is the one of the reading rooms, um, and it's such a wonderful place to do research. They're so great there. But one of the best things, and the reason why is the study desks. They all have the comfiest seats I've ever sat on in my life. And little lamps, individual lamps with switches that illuminate your workspace. So that was pretty incredible. At the British Library, I also got this Alice in Wonderland card. I just loved seeing it in color and thought, this is such a perfect little souvenir. And it's the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And this is the entryway to the Victoria and Albert Museum. I just thought I would get a postcard so that I could remember how grand and beautiful it was. It's always nice to have souvenirs like this because it kind of transports you back to a certain time and place. At the British Museum, 
we also got a pack of 10 postcards of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. So some selected works are in here. And you can see there's quite a few of them. I don't have it open, unfortunately. Oh, yes, I do. Never mind. Just do a quick flip through. These are a little bit less recognizable, I'd say, than some of the other pre Raphaelite works. Um, I feel like the ones that most people know and are the most familiar with are Ophelia or The Awakening, for example, or The Lady of Shalom. But I love seeing postcards like this because you can see that characteristic long neck that you always see in a lot of Rossetti's paintings. And I love sending postcards to my friends, so I thought that it would be really nice to get a little packet. There were so many to choose from, but the only choice for me was the three of lights because I love them so much. And there's actually a very witchy pre-Raphaelite painting that I'll have to tell you about sometime. It's called The Magic Circle. And Tate Britain actually has it in their care. It's not on display, but I hope it will be someday. So, those are my postcards from the British Museum. And I also have here a museum map. And um, a museum map is just so great. I love bringing home a copy because otherwise I wouldn't remember everything that I saw. Um, the layout of the British Museum was just so complicated and I thought that this would be a really nice souvenir of sorts um, later on in life when I look back. Or if I go again and I want to plot my route through the museum. So that's the map. I visited the most magical place I've ever been to, Corf Castle. And Corf Castle is uh, just a castle in ruins, essentially. Um, let's read the inside here. Corf Castle has been part of the Purbeck landscape for nearly a thousand years. Built by William the Conqueror in the 11th century, it remained a royal castle until the reign of Elizabeth I and persisted as an awe-inspiring feat of medieval military might until it was destroyed in the English Civil War. As the castle's role has changed, so its successive owners have left behind evidence of their stories, their signatures in the architecture, spot the murder hole and count the arrow loops, feel the past come to life, and spot the wildlife that has set up home in the fabric of the ruins. So let's open this up. So this is the map of the castle. And as you can see, it's kind of raised, so there's quite a bit of the castle. Um, that still remains in the center here, um, but it's on a hill, and it was such a pleasure to walk around the grounds of this place and just feel thousands of years of history around you, um, and it was um, not bestowed to the National Trust until the 80s. 
seen so many uses over the years, but it was amazing to see it celebrated as the incredible historical site that it is. So that was Gorf Castle. And while I was there, I got another little souvenir, and it's a thimble. And I've never actually owned a thimble before, um, but I thought this was the perfect opportunity to get one. And it just has the castle on it, and it's a scarf castle, so kind of a neat little thing to put in a display case. But I highly recommend if you are in Dorset to visit there's a village bakery there that has the best pastries I've ever had in my life. I will never forget going there. Um, and just, like, look at this. I couldn't believe it when I was there. I was like, I'm just standing in a castle. This feels impossible, you know? Um, so if you're a romantic like me... <laughs> One of the most incredible historical things about Dorset is that Thomas Hardy is actually from there. He wrote a lot of his novels in the Dorset countryside. And if you go at the right time of year, you can actually visit his cottage. I wasn't able to because it was closed for refurbishment. But hopefully in the future I will. And on the topic of Thomas Hardy, for my friend Richard, I got a candle inspired by Hardy's study. And uh, this was at the Dorset County Museum in the gift shop. And it's a candle with English oak and hazelnut notes. And it smells so good. Um, at the Dorset County Museum, they recreated what his study looks like. And um, my friend an academic as well and uh, cares deeply about the way that his study looks. So, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful candle and I wanted to get it for him. So this is a picture, or a painting rather, of one of the main streets in Dorchester, and I spent many a day wandering down this street, doing a little bit of shopping here and there, and uh, yeah, it's just a really beautiful place to visit, and I wanted to commemorate it by having a little. I also have here a museum map from the Victorian Albert. It says the VNA is home to 5,000 years of human ingenuity in art, design, and performance. Have a wander or delve deeper. Be inspired and spark your imagination. And there's all sorts of pictures in here, of the cast room, the building, that Rossetti painting that I looked at for a long time, and then a layout, a floor by floor, 
layout of everything that the museum has to offer. And I didn't even see all of it, and I spent a lot of time there, so I think I read somewhere it's over seven miles of gallery in total, which is hard to conceptualize, but that's a lot of stuff. And they're also opening a new gallery of sorts, but it's really their storage, which is really cool. It's like V&A is just really cool. Um, you gotta go if you're interested in museums. But if you can't go, they do have an ASMR channel, which I watched a lot before I went on my trip. So at the British Museum, they had all sorts of framed uh, postcards. They had a really hard time choosing to but I went with these two and this one is also for my friend Richard because he has a black cat whom he loves with his whole heart and I thought he might enjoy it maybe hang it up somewhere in his house because it says home sweet home on it um, and it is actual art that I believe the British Museum has. Um, it's by Lewis William Lane, and it's a watercolor. And this is one that my partner chose. Um, it's called Cat Looking at Rice Fields Near Asakusa, from the series 100 Famous Views of Ito, by Utagawa Hiroshige. And it's a color wood block print. So this one will be going up on my wall somewhere very, very soon. Okay, so that's all of the paper ephemera that I brought home. But there are a couple other things. So, one of the main things that I got at almost every place that I went to was tote bags. This is the first one that I have. It's from Treadwells. And my fellow witches will know when I say Treadwells. This is one of the best places in the UK, to my knowledge, to get books on witchcraft and magic. So I visited Treadwells, then I picked up a tote bag, and some books that I'll show you um, in another So got a tote bag from the v and and this one has a William Morris print on it as well. I just love the green, it's very witchy, very whimsical, kind of goes with a lot of things that I would wear. So. I got a tote bag from the British Museum. This one is more simple than the other ones, but um, I just thought that it was really nice. Very, like, simple portrayal of the front of the building. And the last tote bag that I got was from the British Library. And again, I love the colors on it. This one's a bit smaller, but it holds just about everything that you need. So, those are all of the dope bags that I brought home. At the 
British Museum. My partner and I also got a couple of little figurines. Um, I feel like to satisfy um, the inner child in both of us. <laughs> so these are the sorts of things that I would pick my mom to buy me if I went to a museum gift shop. But this one is an Egyptian cat made of pewter. He's really, really cute. And it says, The ancient Egyptians believed in the afterlife and that their gods appeared on earth in animal form. The cat was considered to be the incarnation of the goddess Bast, or Bast. Also got the Lewis Chess Knight, which unfortunately we didn't see on display. They were behind a little barrier wall, but um, I thought this might be a nice memento, a reminder of what I can see next time. And the Lewis Chessmen form a remarkable group of iconic within the World Collection of the British Museum, found on the Isle of Lewis, about AD 1150 to 1200. The chess pieces consist of elaborately worked walrus ivory and whale's teeth. And the last one is of Sutton Hoo. And this one reminds me of the thing. Anglo-Saxon helmet, and it's from about the early 7th century AD, and the British Museum restored it to its former glory. So there are those little trinkets. At the V&A, I also got this suffragette ornament, which I thought was amazing because my journey in academia really started with an interest in the suffragettes and women fighting for the right to vote. So she's beautiful. She's adorned in her little purple jacket with her hat and has a sash on her that says, Votes for Women. Probably keep this on my bookshelf year round, but put it on the Christmas tree when the time comes. At the Dorset Museum, I also got a mug. I just drank tea out of this mug for the first time, and it was amazing. It makes lovely tink tinkly. It has the dirtle door on it, which is this incredible natural formation. And um, it was a little bit too cold for us to visit the dirtle door, but hopefully next time I won't visit in February. I also went to the West End while I was there. And for the first time, I saw the Phantom of the Opera, and it was everything I could have dreamed it to be. Um, my friends Nora and Maddie introduced me to Phantom of the Opera, and uh, I decided I wanted to see it before it closed on Broadway and in the West End, so I picked this up. A little pin with the Phantom and Christine in the boat going into his little lair. I thought that was a neat memento, and this is definitely a shirt that I'll be wearing to bed in the future. I also got a teddy bear, 
and he is a stiff bear. I've dreamed of owning a stiff bear since I was a kid, but they're really hard to come by at good prices in North America. But I walked out of the British Museum and I found the shop that had them, so I couldn't resist. I got the little stiff bear, and I'm putting him on my bedside table. I love him so much. I haven't named him yet, though. If you have any suggestions, let me know. But they're handmade bears, so they're really, really special little guys. And I also visited Lush Oxford Street, which is their flagship store. I got a spa treatment there, and I picked up a couple of goodies while I was there. One of my favorite things is very much in theme. It's Witch's Cauldron Fun. And so you can run these squishy bits underneath water. And it creates a nice bubble bath. And then the top three are actually bath bombs. But you can create. Synesthesia, and you choose a word that most resonates with you. And I chose perspective, so they use the perspective massage bar on you during your treatment. And to take home, you get the massage bar and also a bubble bar. You can kind of like carry the experience home with you. Last, but certainly not least, I got a couple of little British sweets and treats. And this is not all of them. I did a separate video. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in seeing. Um, but these are the highlights. Um, I had never tried Jelly Babies before, and I absolutely adored them. I love them. They're so good. The texture is just divine. One of my friends also asked for rhubarb and custard sweets, so we brought these home for her. And this is as close as I could get to Swedish fish, which have been discontinued where I am. Um, fizzy fish jellies, it just sounded divine. And also Jaffa Cakes, which is just a classic um, snack from the UK. Um, they describe it as chocolate on top, sponge on the bottom, and that tangy orangey bit in the middle. It was so fun to go to grocery stores and look around and see what I could find. My absolute favorite thing that I discovered was hobnobs. I didn't realize that they had them in so many different types. I just love a tea and biscuit experience, especially while doing research. So, so that's just a little taste of everything that I brought back home from the UK. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and seeing some of the little trinkets and things that I picked up. And uh, there will be more about this trip very, very soon. I took some video. I have a book tour that I want to do. Um, but thank you so much for watching. We're already almost... Um, at around 300 subscribers.
this and I'm so thrilled.